Hi friend, it's Pat Sloan here for my daily video and we have a roundup today. We, me, I have a roundup today. <laughs> so, so unique is our daily topic. And this is on there because one of our friends asked me a few weeks ago, like, what are some ways to do interesting borders on your quilts? And over the years, there have been a lot of books written, uh, well, maybe not a lot, several books written <laughs> with interesting borders on them. And so I'll link you below uh, under the video to those books. Um, but if you have a quilt with a interesting or unique border on it, I would love to see it. It really made me think about what have I made. Um, generally when mine are more unique is something like the out west where the whole um, layout is more unique. Uh, I've done scallop borders, uh, you know, I've done that, you know, like angled borders, but it, she's actually talking about creating a border. I've done some uh, interesting ones. Actually, I have a really interesting one that will be coming up in my book that comes out next year, the new book. I can't tell you about the topic yet. It's still a secret <laughs> until it comes a little closer. Uh, so I would like to see if you've made a quilt with a unique border, share it over at the Facebook group, Quilt Along with Pat Sloan, or you can just tell me about it here. Uh, and if you're looking for those books, they're down below. Okay. Now, I've been working on a couple of things, and since I'm talking to you every day, I can tell you that like, I'm not super prolific every day. <laughs> but I'm just not. Um, but you wanna wait here to the end too, because I have something super cool to share with you. Because often what I'm doing is writing. And that is something I have to, sh I have a thing that I've developed for you, to help you uh, for the coming year. Uh, and that'll be at the end. So first, I have, uh, been making strips. I have some more strips for my red and white, you know, like this is a free quilt you make as you're sewing other things. Um, I only had to do about 12 more of these. Now I have to think of maybe 10 more to get the one strip done. You can see in the picture here. Uh, but then I still have to do another full length of like four, a four strip one. And then that can be done. And that will probably go to the spa and have Cindy and Dennis quilt it for me because I, uh, don't want to deal with it. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I'd rather deal other, with other things. So that um, is in progress. Now I did a bit on my crochet and also I got out this lovely shawl that one of our friends sent me when I broke my wrist um, and I just love it. And it's crocheted as far as I can tell. That would be crocheted to me. Um, and if you have a pattern for one of these, it's a triangle. See, there's the triangle. If you know of a pattern, tell me because I'd like to make one for myself that's maybe a little bit longer here because this part, I'd like to see this part a little bit longer, maybe get it down on my arm a little bit more. So this is the one, the rectangle granny. So this is granny, granny squares, right? It's like a granny, granny shawl. So I'm doing this rectangle one with this yarn and I can't decide. I'm thinking my gauge is way too big. I'm, I already went down, I already did this much, a sec, this is my second time. And, and the other needle was, the hook was too big. So on this hook, I'm using a J, I'm using a J hook. And I think this is too big a gauge. I think these are too open. Now this is a chunky yarn, but I'm thinking this gauge is too big. So I'm going to try to go to pull it out and redo it again with a smaller hook. And this is similar in quilting to unsewing, uh, like, but not that it's an error. It's like, I think it's very common when you're working with yarn, um, even if you do a swatch where you do the scale of size. I mean, I did that, but once I start to hook, I think I hook fairly loose. I know some people who like knit really tight and so they have to adjust for that. I think that's where I'm at. This needs to have another go uh, to get it to the point where I can really work on it. And this is what, this is what it looks like. That's what I'm going for. And I just think that's too open still. Um, also, all the balls that I have start with gray in the middle. So it's going to be gray, then it'll go to um, the aqua and the green. But it has a lot more gray than it has any other colors, which I really like. It feels very uh, wintry to me. I don't know why, just I really like those colors. So doing that, on my cross stitch, I, made some progress here. I started the homemade and this is, this is what this project is. And so I did a little bit more on that. 
I need to alternate between the two of them because, you know, like maybe do cross stitch one day, do some crochet the other day. What I found is that the crochet on my left hand, if I've already worn my left hand out a bit for the day, crochet is no good because I'm manipulating with this left hand a lot when I crochet um, because of yarns wrapped around it. And so uh, that was an interesting to learn because <laughs> it's like, okay, well that day it didn't work so well. Um, but I'm moving along a little bit, doing a little bit on both of those. I also, let's talk about the jelly, the jelly roll quilt. So I have all those blocks. I did not do blocks to show you today. So instead I have them all up on the wall and I've messed around with the colors a little bit. You know, this is, it's supposed to be five across. I'm doing all of them. So it'd be five across and I don't know, like seven down or something. I've got the pattern pinned up on the wall there, the layout. Um, so I was also trying to see like when you lay it out, if you look for the cornerstone, you've got a cornerstone on the bottom and then the top, like bottom right, top left, bottom right, top left. And then you switch it and it's just sort of like the rows are shifted and you just start it with top, bottom, top, bottom. So it's always the same, but it's just shifted one uh, for each row so that they alternate. Um, now, I think what I'm going to end up doing is sew a bunch uh, over the weekend. I've already got this group of the, the centers done, but I'm just going to sew along like that and then at some point get a, um, get a couple more blocks finished. You know, stop and then just finish like three blocks at once, that kind of a thing. So, but it's moving along quite nicely. Some of you have done quite a few blocks on your jelly, uh, jelly roll quilt. This is the ripples pattern, which the links are below. Uh, and it's also at my, I love, to, I love to make quilts. You go there and there's the project page and then you can see all the different project pages. So the I love to make quilts is all the different sew along pages. So you can, you know, go through the list there. Super easy. Now one, before we get to the fun thing I developed for you, actually developed for me too, uh, is I wanted to get in some mask supplies because I know that, uh, you know, I wanted to try them out and see what's out there on the market because there are some really useful products have come out. One is some of the mask panels, which are super cute. Um, this is one by Ruby Star. Here we go. So there are either formed ones or rectangles they've done. Whoops, that's upside down. But look, my beloved strawberries and the typewriter, the cats and the, oh, like there's a unicorn and the sun. So I have some family members that have to wear, have to uh, work in, in the community where they have to go in and see people all the time. And so I'm going to make them some extra ones to have, some cute ones. Look at the bear, look at the bear. <laughs> that's so cute. Oh, I'll get my scarfs falling. All right, so this these panels are, are really darling. Um, they're pretty new, but what I also found, what I also found, there is a template, and I didn't get the template yet. I might, I might not, but there's some interfacings, um, you know, some filters to put inside. Uh, so I'm using a lot of batiks also, particularly for one of the layers because uh, they're a much tighter weave. So here's some filters too that you can put in. And what I was super excited about are the nose guards because I think they're a must. So uh, all of the ones I make have a nose guard and right now we have some heavy duty, um, basically it was electric fence wire which we've ha owned for like a zillion years. I don't know why we have electric fence wire because we've never owned an electric fence, but Greg got it somewhere along the way. Somebody gave it to him. So I've been using that for my nose guard. So I'm really excited to try these. Um, and for my family that needs to wear the mask all the time for their work, uh, these extenders, so they don't have to rub their ears. They can put them, you know, put the extender and then loop them on there and get a good fit. So these, all these different things, now, I don't know what's, I'll link you to what, where they are. You might have to, they come and go to the store pretty fast. So if they're not there, you can get a notice. And then some drawstrings uh, for the ties. So those are pretty nice too for adjustable. Cause then you don't, you know, if you're not have with a person to fit it to them exactly, this and this makes a better fit because they can adjust them for their own um, size that they need. So I'm kind of excited to make the, uh, to make one of these up. 
I might have to make make a couple really cute ones up. I think there's some holiday ones too. Um, I don't know if they were winter or if they were just Christmas, but I'll link you to all the mask stuff so that you can take a look at it. But the tools are great now that everybody's had to make them, you know, we, we've all been making them because we know how to sew. Uh, but they're just um, great to have some of the things that make it life easier for the people who have to wear these all the time. Um, you know, I don't have to go out that much, so, you know, um, but Every, that's not the case for a lot of you. You do have to. You have to go to work. You work in our grocery stores and, you know, all those kind of things at doctor's offices and everything else. So we re I really appreciate all of that, that all of you are doing out on the front line, keeping us all safe. All right. A couple things here. First, the housekeeping one. On your calendar, I wanted to, I wrote to the Fat Quarter Shop to ask about the socialites. The next two blocks fall on holidays. The next block is, uh, not the next two, the, the, the 25th, you know, on Christmas Day, there's, was, is Friday this year. So that means it would have been a socialite block. And then, of course, that means Christmas Day was is the next Friday. So I asked them what they're doing. They said, no, they're going to take a bye on, um, on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. And we'll start up again on January 8th. So we still have one more socialite for this month, uh, and then we will pick it up, or however it works, whatever, wherever we are in the calendar, you can figure it out. But uh, December 25th and January 1st will not be socialite blocks. So mark that on your calendar, and that's good, because if you are a little bit behind, you can catch up. If you didn't start, but you really wanted to, you can start doing them between Christmas and, you know, you've got two weeks that you can make, you know, you could focus on making some of them and seeing if you want to continue on with the sew along, because there's quite a few left to do. So it'd be fun if you sewed with us. All right. Okay, so here's the other cool thing. I, when we talked up yesterday, I was talking about having some plans for yourself, being sure that you are just not sort of drifting I mean, I, sometimes I feel that way. I feel like I'm just drifting. I, you know, just waiting for all of this to be over. Um, but you know, this is a long, a long time still till that's going to happen. And it's going to be cold. It's going to be the winter. And um, I need to give myself some focus on the personal side of things to be sure. And, and you know, even just work things and fun things. You know, but you have a plan. So I decided to create a a planning form for us. Yes, it's for me. <laughs> you can use it too. Um, so what I did is that it is not related to a certain time period. You will add your time period. So I put the word date there so that you can go and decide, do you need to give yourself uh, some organizations for just maybe three months? You know, maybe something's going on and it's a little crazy and you need to write it down just for a three month period, the key items that you need to be sure are going on. Maybe you just want to do it through the winter, you know, like maybe you just want to do it between now and, you know, April, you know, when it things, of course, like April rains all the time, but, you know, <laughs> it's like, can't get out anyway, it's going to be raining. Uh, but, but you put the date on there. You can do it for a whole year saying, okay, you want to put all your 2021 planning here and planning here. Let me explain what I'm talking about because it's not like, these are sort of some high level items that you want to be sure you have in place or want to do over the coming time period. So let's just say it's through the winter because I think that's how I'm going to approach mine. Just what I want to do between now and, you know, April 15th, maybe let's pick, you know, the middle of April, which would be the sort of the toughest, darkest, coldest, more um, in the in stay at home period. Uh, so I made categories. I thought uh, these are put down things that you want to, how do I say this? Put down things that you want to accomplish, you want to try, or you want to make happen. Because if we don't, if you think of it, you think, oh yeah, like I would like to, uh, you know, paint the steps inside the house. Um, or I would like to freshen up my bathroom area. Like I'd like to change out the decor or, you know, make new tea towels for in there or, you know, bathroom towels, or get some new ones. You know, you have, you have things like that, that if you don't write it down, all of a sudden they have never happened because you just, it's not a focus, it's not a priority, but it's something that couldn't bring you joy. It couldn't give you a 
purpose. Uh, and when I broke my wrists, I can tell you that the biggest thing I had to learn to do in the first four months there when they were broken was to find some purpose every day, something I could do, something I could control, because not only did I have the pandemic to deal with, I had broken wrists where I couldn't do anything really much, not much for myself. Um, and so I needed to grab on and have a goal like every day, this is what I do. So think of things that you would have for indoor, things that you want to make, you know, and that can be quilting, but it might also be you want to make a, um, who you would make a, a bench for your yard. You want to make, uh, you know, some, you might, maybe you want to get back into clothing sewing. I'm trying to think of things. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Um, we've got cooking, cooking and eating. For me, it's like I definitely want to learn to do sourdough bread. And I'm thinking, okay, I just need to make that happen because reading about it, thinking about it, doesn't make it happen. What I have to do is there's a few supplies I don't have. Like, well, I could do it with whatever I have, honestly. I could do it with what I have. But I would like to have a nice container to put the uh, yeast in. Oh, this is falling off. <laughs> I would like to have a nice container and some things like that, that I just want to get a few tools and then I'm going to make it happen. Because once you make a commitment on sourdough bread, it's kind of like a relationship. You know, you have to feed that relationship every day. So you might want to have a certain food you want to cook. You might want to, you know, try something you haven't made in a long time or ever. So then I have health. All right, health is a biggie. Make a commitment to walk every day. Make a commitment not to eat snacks after nine o'clock at night. Um, you know, make a commitment to do yoga every day. There'll be more on that. Okay, what else? Outdoor, things you wanna change outdoor, things you wanna do, do you wanna just get outside every day? If you're reading the Huga, you will see that going outside even when it's cold and it, that's invigorating it's good for your health and so i am going to make a commitment to getting in outside every day even when it's super cold unless the weather's super nasty and even then i might just you know bundle up and sit on the front porch um, friendships and family uh, we all know that they're super important. Um, the thing is, once you're not able to really go out that much, even if it's just because of weather or whatever, you know, make sure that you keep those connections. Um, maybe you do a project with your closest friends. They may not be quilt friends. Maybe you decide to do one of those games that you can play online as a group. Um, maybe you decide if you're all gardeners that you start your gardening plans and you start a Facebook group that you're together or an email list that you talk about it often you ha somebody has to ramp it up and make that happen there always has to be a leader no matter if it's a fun group or not somebody has to be making those conversations happen and that can be you it's not hard they're your friends they're your family make it happen if it's important to you all right the last one read that <laughs> attitude adjustments yes <laughs> we all have an attitude about something at some point and so they're generally not healthy. They're generally not things that will be helpful. So if you catch yourself or you know right now you've got an attitude about this, that, or the other, put down that you are going to work on getting rid of that, getting not focusing on that, eliminating that. Uh, so I think an attitude adjustment is super important. <laughs> Okay, this has been a long one, my friend, but I wanted to tell you, I put this out here. I'm going to change the name of the, at my, uh, I love to make quilts. I've got a page for the calendars. I am going to change that to say calendars and downloads because I also have this that's out there. Um, and so I've had that for a long time, a project completion sheet. Uh, and so I'll put both of those on the calendar page. All right. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. And I am very excited about what we can do together. Mwah. See you online.